Hey y'all, I was in Houston last week doing both some video production work for a client and also recording some new interviews for the Creative Christians podcast series. But while I was there, I also had time to catch a sneak peek showing of Alejandro Monteverde's new film, Cabrini. How was it? I'll tell you all about it in my review, coming up on the other side. Hey there, and welcome back, y'all, to another episode of Afterthoughts, the companion video series to the Creative Christians podcast, where we explore all things related to Christians, creatives, and culture. I'm Tim Risto, host of the Creative Christians podcast and here at Afterthoughts. So I had an opportunity to see Cabrini for free in Houston last week. It was one of those sneak peek showings put on by the studio, in this case Angel Studios, who produced and is distributing the film. Angel Studios is probably best known for the TV series The Chosen, about the life of Christ, and also last year's big hit faith-based film, Sound of Freedom. Movies directed by Alejandro Monteverde, who also directed Sound of Freedom and the 2006 film Bella. It doesn't release officially until March 8th, 2024, but they are holding these select sneak peek showings across the nation, uh, in select cities to hopefully build, obviously, strong word of mouth about the film and help it premiere stronger. I just happened to be in Houston, as I mentioned, for other work at the same time as this particular showing, so I went ahead and took advantage of it and checked out the film. The Houston showing was actually pretty well attended, though it was not a packed theater at all. Probably about 75 people, maybe a little bit less. And I honestly didn't know what to expect, you know, before going into this showing, especially after the success of Sound of Freedom last year. You know, this was a free free showing, so would there be a line to get in? You know, would I have any trouble getting a seat? No, there wasn't either of those. Uh, would there be an Angel Studios rep there asking us to fill out a survey after the viewing of the film? No, there wasn't. You know, there was no one there. You just went in, got a seat, watched the film, and left. And I realize most people don't know who, like, Alejandro Monteverde, the director, is, uh, his connection to Sound of Freedom. Um, so there's a lot of people that may not know about Cabrini uh, in general. But Monteverde is, I believe, Catholic himself. And so judging by the age of the audience here at the Houston Preview and some of the conversations I overheard after the film was over, um, these were largely older Catholics in attendance. And I'm guessing even some nuns or former nuns were there, perhaps even a couple of priests and then some younger families, uh, some young couples. Uh, so that audience makes sense as this is a film about a Catholic nun. Cabrini is based on the true story of Francesca Cabrini, an Italian Catholic missionary living in the late 1800s and who is a very headstrong and fiercely independent woman motivated by her faith and to help others in need, particularly children and Italian immigrants. So what did I think of the film? Mild spoilers ahead, so take heed. It's actually really a very interesting and well-made film. It's more epic than I anticipated as it navigates this period of history, particularly in New York City of the 1890s, while also telling this more intimate story of Cabrini herself, and the people whose lives she touches around her. The story is good, and while I knew next to nothing about Cabrini coming into this film, I'm not Catholic, uh, I came away intrigued by her character and accomplishments. The credits have the usual disclaimer that this is based on a true story, but things were changed or altered to make a more dramatic film, as well as characters changed, altered, combined, or what have you, for the sake of dramatic storytelling. As I said, I'm not familiar with the real-life story of Cabrini beyond this film, so I can't comment on what was close to the real story and what was changed. This is a movie described as an American Christian biographical film about Roman Catholic missionary Francesca Cabrini's efforts to fight for the equality, health, and happiness of immigrant orphans. Along the way, she encounters pushback from the Roman Catholic Church and even the Pope himself who ultimately challenges her to consider New York 
as her missionary field instead of her preferred choice of China. She encounters sexism in the male-dominated society of the later 19th century New York City and battles the anti-Italian racism flourishing at the time as well, all while attempting to first build an orphanage for immigrant children and then a hospital that does not discriminate against Italians. The film starts strong with a powerful opening scene that plops us down right into the middle of the Five Points area of 19th century New York, a disease-ridden, crime-infested neighborhood of lower Manhattan, densely populated and filled with Italian immigrants, many of them orphaned children. The opening scene features a young Italian boy frantically pushing a cart with an unconscious woman in it up the crowded streets of New York, attempting to get into the local hospital for help. He is refused. The scene appropriately sets the tone for the film and for what will eventually become Cabrini's fight for charity ahead. The middle of the film meanders a bit here and there as it tries to figure out what plotline to follow from Cabrini's life to present it thoroughly without feeling too small. Do we follow Cabrini or the orphans she serves? Do we follow Vittoria, the prostitute, in her resurrection from her old life, or do we follow the mayor and his minions plotting to shut down Cabrini's efforts to help immigrants? There's a lot going on and many different characters and storylines to follow, It balances them all relatively well, however. It certainly helps to give it that more epic feel than if it only stayed totally on Cabrini the whole time. Cabrini's past is still a bit of a mystery, even by film's end. Spoiler alert, she nearly drowns earlier in her life, as seen in flashbacks, but we don't know who the man is who saved her or what the circumstances were surrounding it. But she is left dealing with a lung condition that subjects her to asthmatic attacks and is told by doctors she has only anywhere from two to five years left to live. Breath or breathing has an interesting symbolism in the film. In fact, the first sound we hear at the beginning, as the Angel Studios logo fades in, is the intense sound of the young boy breathing hard, trying to catch his breath as he pushes his mother in the cart up the streets of New York. When Cabrini herself is first introduced, She is coughing hard and having one of her bronchial attacks. Similar to how silhouettes are used throughout the film, I think there are some interesting symbolic elements going on here with breathing throughout the film that I'd love to examine closer on a second viewing. The story does get bogged down a bit as it gets into its last half hour or so, and then the film just kind of ends with one of the lines as seen in the trailer. I won't say which one so as to not spoil it for anyone, but it seems a little bit abrupt as to where the film's story ends in her life story. But to their credit, the filmmakers close the film with a montage of photographs and animated graphics showing the real-life accomplishments of Cabrini from that point on until her death and the impact her life and work had on the world. Like I said, it was more epic than I anticipated it would be, but also intimate in telling her story. It's really a beautiful film to look at in many ways, much more so than Sound of Freedom. Even though it's largely a grittier film about Cabrini helping the underprivileged in the Five Points area of New York, the shots and framing and fluid movement are often gorgeous to look at. It's a much more stylish film visually than Sound of Freedom was, and makes select and relatively effective use of CGI to recreate different period-specific shots and backgrounds. It works. The scene of the orphan boys in the boiler factory as chaos ensues is perhaps one of the weakest use of CGI, but for the most part, it feels like we're in New York or Rome of the late 1800s. It uses the big, broad shots of the cities or the environments to help accent the story, establish mood and atmosphere in effective ways. There's beautifully framed shots like this one, as seen in the trailer, of a funeral wagon and the people around it done all in silhouette. Awesome shot. I also think of this shot, as partially seen in the trailer, where we push in on Cabrini as she sails aboard ship, leaving Rome, headed for New York to begin her ministry there, as motivated by the Pope. The shot starts with this push-in, 
then continues on through the porthole, out and down into the water, segueing into paper boats with flowers on them set adrift on the water, and coming to rest on what I think was a flashback to a younger Cabrini on the shoreline, setting those boats adrift on the water. It's a great sequence that feels very fluid while moving the story of Cabrini, her past and present, forward. The cinematography by Gorka Gomez Andrew is impressive. He worked with director Monteverde on Sound of Freedom and other films. I really see his growth as a cinematographer in this film. It's very much a film lover's visual feast. It's great stuff. Monteverde continues to grow as a director as well. This is another true-to-life, very human interest story, much like his past films, and he focuses on people and their emotional drive and spirit. He directs the actors very well, and the action is well-designed too. This is a much bigger story, however, and while he handles it very well, it may be a bit too broad and big of an effort to fully capture with this runtime and budget. I don't know what the budget was. I looked it up and haven't been able to find that out yet. But as with Sound of Freedom, whatever it was, I'm sure it wasn't huge, probably bigger than Sound of Freedom, um, and they use their budget well, and the film looks very good. But it's a story that is somewhat epic in scale and covers a lot of territory and some very big issues and large-scale locations. While Monteverde manages it all really well, I can't help but feel that the seams do show in places, and at times it feels a bit smaller than it should, even though I was pleasantly surprised how epic it did come across. Acting in the film is very good. The woman who plays Cabrini, Christiana Del Anna, is very believable and simply becomes Cabrini. I never once thought this wasn't the woman she was portraying. She disappeared into the part. Cabrini is a woman of faith, a fighter, an entrepreneur, and also wounded. She portrays all these sides really well. John Lithgow is great, although really both he and Giancarlo Giannini, who plays the Pope, have kind of glorified cameo roles. Their scenes are spread out a bit in the film to make it seem like they have meatier roles than they actually do. When you count up their overall screen time, it doesn't amount to that much. But similar to how Sound of Freedom made great use of its small budget and looked much more expensive on screen than it actually was, this film makes good use of its acting talent and you feel like they are a bigger part of the storyline than they actually are. But they both have some powerful lines and scenes in the film. Lithgow's mayor seems to have a somewhat sudden change of heart near the end, but to be fair, we don't see his character development beyond this point as the film ends there. Still, both men are great talents to have on board, and the filmmakers make great use of their screen time. I'd rather leave the theater wishing to have seen more of them than feeling they had overused them. David Morris, another great character actor who's been in a ton of films and TV series over the decades, including early on in the TV series St. Elsewhere, is wonderful here too. Loved seeing him in the film as Archbishop Corrigan, who both frustrates and befriends Cabrini. They have an interesting dynamic to their relationship, and it's fun to watch it play out. Also, Romana Maggiora Vergano, who portrays Vittoria, a prostitute Caprini meets in Five Points, is quite good, showcasing an innocence, pain, and hardened personality through her eyes and facial expressions amidst a softening heart as she comes to trust Cabrini and support her efforts. I thought she did a great job, and her and Cabrini's relationship is interesting to watch develop as well. I would be remiss if I didn't talk at least briefly about the faith aspect of this film. Obviously, being a story about a Catholic nun or missionary and her entanglements with the leaders of the Catholic Church, its emphasis is on the Catholic faith. And while the faith aspect is more pronounced here than in, say, Sound of Freedom, it still is not overt or preachy. At a key moment in the film, Cabrini does quote a Bible verse, which, sadly, I cannot remember at the moment. It may have been Matthew twenty-five thirty-five about helping the less fortunate but she states it very pointed and direct. There are obvious expressions of faith in helping people and fighting for those in need, the less fortunate of society, and in speaking up for those who don't have a strong voice in society, using positions of influence to help others in need. 
I think there's also a great message of forgiveness in Cabrini as she embraces the prostitute Vittoria, among many others, and helps her to move beyond her past and grow in her faith. But from what I remember, there's not necessarily a clear-cut message of Christ is the way to salvation. If it errs in anything, this may be it. It's much more about this eventually sainted woman who is fighting for the less fortunate and trying to do some incredible good in the world, which she does. Her faith is a part of that, but not necessarily front and center, and the biblical message may be a bit secondary in this story. I like when a film is more real and genuine and not overtly preachy, but this being about a missionary may have left some of the biblical message a bit too soft in favor of telling a more social warrior story. Again, I really need to see it again before I pronounce any firm statement on that aspect of the film. You may ask about the politics of the film. A hot-button issue of today is immigration. Is there a political message on immigration in the film? Not that I caught on this first viewing, other than just helping people and orphans in need. Cabrini is a strong woman. Comes across in the trailer very clearly. Does this mean this is a feminist movement film? No, not that I caught again on this first viewing. She's portrayed as a strong woman of faith who is clashing with certain sexist men of the time period, as well as the leaders of the Roman Catholic Church. I didn't come away with any stronger message than that. Okay, so bottom line, is Cabrini worth seeing? even if you're not Catholic. Yes, it is. I think it's a well-made biographical and historical film that's visually interesting with a fascinating story about this fiercely independent woman of faith based upon real-life people and situations. The story you know, wanders a bit and the pacing is inconsistent, but it's fairly tight throughout, and the acting, directing, and cinematography are all strong. The filmmakers aim high, and while they may not have completely reached the heights they aimed for, it is definitely an engaging film to watch with interesting characters and a fascinating perspective on a period of American history that I was not as familiar with. I would certainly recommend Cabrini, and while it's not as intense or provocative of a film as Sound of Freedom, it does make for an engaging and thought-provoking time at the cinema worth seeing on the big screen. So I'd encourage you to check it out in one of those remaining sneak peeks that may still be going on in a city near you, if you can catch it, or certainly when it premieres in theaters nationwide on March 8th. Anyway, that's it for me. What do you think? Does Cabrini sound like a film that you'd be interested in seeing? If you've caught a sneak peek showing of Cabrini already, like I did, what did you think of it? Leave your comments below, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video and my channel. Otherwise, that's it for today. Have a great day. Stay creative, and above all else, stay in God's Word. Blessings, y'all. Also, if you have not heard the Creative Christians podcast, please head on over to my Buzzsprout page. The link is on screen now, and it's also in the description below. Check it out. It's all about Christians and creatives and how their faith influences their work and creativity. Well worth checking out. You can also go to Apple Podcasts or any other podcast distributor. We are all over the place. Just search for Creative Christians and Tim Risto. Music